Hello and welcome to another exciting episode of How Not To Write A Novel. Now, if you're paying attention, you might have noticed that I failed to upload a video yesterday. That's not because anything bad's happened, I just managed to distract myself for way longer than I anticipated helping Mum to do a jigsaw. Um, I got barely a couple of words written, but today has gone a little better. Um, I have managed to write something today, as well as going for a decent length walk. Um, I've written a little more on the chapter that I was working on that I mentioned in the last video. Um, there should be a link down there in the description if you want to read that. Uh, no bits particularly stand out for me to read to you. There doesn't seem to be anything particularly um, worth extracting to discuss the, um, it's basically just Daryl and Aaron talking about the plans for interviewing this Dutch guy. They're talking about the new guy who's talk going to join them, but well, I'm hoping that the subtext of that conversation will also tell us a little bit about Alex, about Julian, and about the relationship between these guys. Um, we do have um, a throwaway line. You know what he's like. He'll explode if we say the new guy can join the team and he doesn't like him. He'll be mad whatever. Like when he invited Alex, remember? He'll sulk like a kid, then get over it. And this guy's a former Marine, medals and all, so he can finally stop belly aching about civilians getting in his way. Now, I, th I think that that could use polishing up, but it gets across the idea the new guy is a former Marine, so military experience. It also tells the audience that that's important to Julian. Julian has military background of his own, because he's talking about civilians, and Julian doesn't like work, working with people who aren't military. So that gives the reader who's actually thinking about it a first hint of why there's this friction between Julian and Alex. So I, I hope you can see why I like that. I, I'm putting more information than you realise into it so that we don't need to explain all the facts separately. I'm still not very good at that, but I think I'm getting better. But most of what I've done today is actually coming up with these character profiles. Um, I previously shared a set of profiles for the first couple of characters. I've now gone through listing each of the characters and a vague impression of their different gifts. Now, this hasn't actually come up in the text yet, but I think I should explain what a gifted character is. Um, so that you can understand what I'm saying when I'm talking about my plans for as the novel progresses. Basically, um, there's humans in this world and there's unnaturals. There's lots of different unnaturals who all work in different ways. The races that inspired legends of vampires, werewolves, ghosts, all these other things. But were they interact heavily with a human, like if they attack someone, if that person has the right kind of determination, they can become gifted. They get a special power that most humans don't have. And in terms of power levels, that puts them somewhere between unnaturals and humans. If they've got a power that they can use in a fight, a gifted person will nearly always be able to beat a normal person. But it still takes two or three of them before they can seriously consider threatening an unnatural. But the way it works is a gift is always something specific and something limited. And it's always a single gift. You don't get people who, can, who have more than one aspect to their gift. So, for example, Julian can distort gravity in the presence of danger. 
There has to be danger there, otherwise he can't do that. It doesn't necessarily have to be danger to him or to someone he cares about, but it has to be a, a danger to life, in a way. I'm not sure how best to explain that. It's like somebody has to be being threatened. When this happens, he can run up a steep slope as if it's level ground, or he can skid, skate, tumble down a level road, allowing him to move faster. He also uses this with guns. Basically, um, he can adjust gravity to have some tiny influence on the path of a bullet. But that's something he's not properly learned because it's not something easy to practice. So it sometimes maybe works. Um, Daryl doesn't have a gift, but he has contacts and he has money. So he's like an honorary member of the group. Incidentally, he's decided to name the group The Founders, naming them after Julian's high school garage band. Julian hates this, but everybody else has picked up the name and he can't get them to drop it. Uh, he's very embarrassed by it. Aaron, who was originally named Mark, I think I might have used that name when I mentioned him in a previous video, is a priest. He went into the priesthood because he didn't like the kind of hierarchical nature of business. He believed the priesthood was about altruism and teaching people and he didn't realise there was so much formal structure behind it. And eventually he left it because he doesn't like the structure of the church. He still has faith, he just doesn't like religion. And his gift is the power of protection, which if you've seen my previous novel, Hunter's Gift, that's very similar to Steph's power. When an unnatural chooses to target someone, gifted or human, he gets a brief burst of strength, speed, skill, whatever he needs in order to protect that person. It's limited, it only works for a couple of seconds, and it's only when an unnatural first turns their attention to a particular person. So it has to be, it could be them picking out prey in a crowd, them picking out a target, or it could be a new ally joining the fight against the unnatural, as long as the unnatural notices them. So that's kind of flexible, but there's still that limitation that it only works in these circumstances. Then we've got Alex, Alexina Quinn. I decided that she has a slightly unusual name because it feels better to me. She has short-term precognition. She can see what's going to happen a few seconds ahead as long as it involves a sudden change, something moving quickly. So violence, yes. Dodging bullets by moving before they're fired, she can do that. Um, evading traps, not so much. And it would have to be fairly dramatic for her to be able to use it in a non-fighting situation. But because she's also the martial artist, she's learned over years to use that effectively when she's fighting, to see someone else's attacks before they come. And Walter D. Brannigan, uh, commonly known as Dutch, his gift is something luck-based. I'm not sure how that's going to work. I think it might be he has good luck if it's something that comes down to him versus an unnatural, he has better luck than everyone else. But only if it's a direct contest that's down to mostly randomness. If the odds are stacked, if somebody's cheating, it doesn't help him. 
if he has a chance of winning by blind chance, then there's a much better chance that he'll win. He just has good luck when unnaturals are around. But anyway, I'm hoping that tomorrow I'll have more to talk to you about, more actual text for the story. Um, and um, I guess I'd better get on with editing this video because it's just turned midnight. Take six. I've managed to get my lines wrong for this bit five times. So, um, you pretty much know the drill down by now. Leave a comment, subscribe to my channel, watch the previous video if you've not seen it, watch the next video if it's up yet, and yeah, I managed to get it right this time. Bye, see you tomorrow.